Okay, hello. Welcome everyone for joining this talk, last session of the day. Um, my name is Georg Kunz. I'm a senior systems designer at Ericsson and the PTL of the Dovetail project in OPNFE. Yeah, uh, hello from my side as well. I, uh, I'm, my name is Tim Ernisch. I work at Ericsson too, and I'm the, uh, I have the pleasure of being the TSC chair of OPNFE. Um, and we are going to talk about uh, how we leverage the uh, testing projects in OPNFV, the testing projects that we have basically created in order to produce the reference platform, that, which is the main deliverable of OPNFV, to create a compliance validation program in OPNFV. And we will explain what that is and, and how everything works. And we will also give you, actually, a small live demo on the uh, compliance portal, the web portal that we have, and explain how you, in case you're interested, could uh, submit something for compliance verification. So um, briefly introducing what OPNV is about, in case someone doesn't know that. Um, OPNV is a project that facilitates um, development of open source components specifically for NFV use cases across a large number of uh, open source projects, uh, which makes OPNV uh, very much focused on system level integration, uh, deployment, and testing. Uh, and the main deliverable, as I mentioned, is a reference NFE platform, um, which, um, of course, has certain capabilities, also certain characteristics, and it has a certain level of performance, obviously. Uh, and we are using this set of characteristics of the reference platform to, uh, to create criteria for compliance with the OpenV reference platform. Um, the program is called OPNV Verified, uh, in short, OVP. And what that program essentially does is it verifies that a commercial uh, NFVI solution uh, exposes the same APIs in the first place, but not only APIs, but also behaviors and characteristics. Uh, what, what we mean with behaviors is that it, we're um, not only validating that if you send a command to one of the APIs, the API returns the expected response, but we actually also check whether the underlying system really behaves in the expected way. And characteristics essentially is like how well do things work. Not only do they work or do they not work, but also how well do they work. Um, the main, let's say, business rationale behind this is that um, both vendors and operators today have to spend a lot of effort in um, making sure that what they have bought from a vendor actually does what the vendor has promised. This, that's the so-called vendor acceptance testing. Uh, and also onboarding virtual network functions onto that platform is typically a couple of months integration project nowadays. And uh, with this compliance program, we're trying to establish an industry consensus uh, um, around what someone can accept, uh, expect from a NFVI platform um, so that the um, purchasing process, uh, of the process of an operator buying an NFVI platform can be simplified uh, by instead of sort of rolling out detailed requirements, a vendor can basically just require the platform to be OpenAV compliant and, and sort of be sure about a certain number of things that way. The main technical components in the OVP are the Dovetail test tool, which is um, a, a, actually a wrapper around a number of uh, the other test tools that we have in OpenAV. Um, that, that wrapper is required in order to make sure that things run smoothly on non-OpenAV platforms and in, non, in other lab environments than the OpenAV lab environments. Uh, and there is the web portal, which we will show uh, later in the presentation, uh, where you can basically upload test results, uh, display them, and uh, the review team within the community um, uses that portal uh, with, a, with a slightly different way of looking at things in order to review the results and eventually put the stamp on it. Um, the technical test scope within OVP is based, as I mentioned, on uh, tests developed by OPNFV uh, in, in, in principle, like for other purposes. And the, we actually, in the meantime, also have test cases which are kind of driven 
from the compliance program. So the compliance program has basically asked in, in a number of cases uh, the uh, other testing projects to implement certain test cases because they were sort of the idea for them came out of the compliance uh, context. Uh, but initially the program was basically leveraging what other uh, projects had created. Uh, Morgan Richon uh, had actually a nice picture in his presentation earlier this afternoon uh, where he was basically drawing a box which sort of represented the OPNFE test scope overall, and then there was a subset in that box which represented the test scope for, for OVP, and then there was an arrow which kind of indicated that OVP tries to consume a larger and larger su subset of the uh, overall existing tests. Um, OVP has releases, which are, are labeled according to a year dot number of the release scheme. So the current release is the 2018.1 release. And each of these releases um, is tied to a specific version of the reference platform. So the currently uh, valid release 2018.1 uh, corresponds to the Danube release of OPNFE. And uh, the next release that is in the making right now is going to correspond to the Fraser release of OpenFE, and Fraser came out in April this year. Uh, so we have, uh, we're, we're aiming for a six month release cadence for the program, and um, the target is that uh, the OVP always follows three months after the uh, release of the corresponding platform. Um, Ways to, to participate for vendors of NFVI products are through self-testing, which basically means uh, the, the vendor of the uh, product that wants to get certified downloads the Dovetail tool and runs it in the private lab, and then, has, then the, the tool actually creates a small file which then can be uploaded to, web, to the web portal and then be through, through like clicking on a button submitted for official review. And then there is a re review team out of uh, consisting of volunteers in the uh, OpenID community that will then look at those results and see if everything is okay. But there is also, at least the governance of the OVP program defines also so-called third-party labs, which can create a business around running this uh, compliance process for companies that for some reason don't want to do this themselves or that want to have an additional element of neutrality in, in the process. Uh, this is actually not completely possible nowadays, but it's from the way we've constructed the governance of the project, uh, it is foreseen. And it's, uh, it's something that we're actually pretty interested in uh, entering into collaboration with anyone that would be interested in, in following this model. Um, there is obviously a relationship to uh, the uh, OpenStack powered programs that already exist in OpenStack. Um, for those that don't know this, I'm almost sure there's nobody in the room that doesn't know this, but just to, make sure, just to be on the safe side, the uh, OpenStack powered programs are maintained by the OpenStack Interop Working Group under the governance of the board of directors. Um, they run selected test cases from Tempest and they have a, a tool called RefStack, which uh, is similar, which has a similar relationship to Tempest as the Dovetail tool has to the um, other test projects in OpenFV. Uh, the focus is on API interoperability. Uh, the, the whole idea was essentially born out of the idea that applications that are developed to run on OpenStack powered public cloud should run on any public cloud and not only on the one that they've developed, they've been developed on. Um, and, but there, in the meantime, uh, uh, it has been realized that uh, the program as such is valid or, or useful also in other situations. So there are ongoing efforts to um, establish basically sub flavors of this program to address uh, specific capabilities among them uh, uh, NFE actually. So there is, that, this is an area where we actually collaborate. Um, so OVP, like in order to sort of wrap the uh, relationship up, OVP is complementary because OPNFV tests not only APIs but also uh, characteristics and behaviors, uh, and it's specifically focused on NFV. And uh, of course, we're trying to, well, since the OpenStack powered program is older, it, it has sort of uh, gained more experience what's the, in, in terms of what's the right way of handling things, the, the, the processes that have been developed around it. So we're, we're definitely trying to adopt best practices and, and lessons learned from OpenStack powered. And uh, for example, the, the, the process around the portal, the way we've structured this, is pretty much inspired by how, how RefSec has done things. Um, 
to explain a little bit more what the technical scope of the current release of OPNFV Verified is, we have um, a number of mandatory test cases which need to be passed by a product that wants to get the label, um, which actually, uh, to a large extent, consist of the OpenStack uh, Interop API tests. So we have 200, 205 uh, Tempest test cases, basically, which uh, sort of create the baseline. And, and the reason behind that is that, obviously, in order to sort of run NFV use cases, you have to be sure that, first of all, you actually can bring up a VM and that you can actually reach that VM through the networking that you've set up and that two VMs that you bring up can talk to each other and all these things. So those are relatively fundamental things that every cloud basically has to provide. But of course, that doesn't make them irrelevant for NFV use cases. So we have to make sure that that is sort of in place before we can go further. Uh, we have also uh, two test cases that actually do packet forwarding between virtual machines, which uh, where we sort of positively verify that packets are actually reaching their destination. Uh, and we have a number of test cases uh, looking at high availability of the OpenStack control plane. So we, we actually expect a redundant configuration of the OpenStack control plane, and we make sure that if we sort of actively do um, like destructive testing, kill one of the, let's say, the neutron processes, we make sure that the IPI stays responsive. Uh, responsive sorry. And then there are a number of optional test cases, and the reason for that is that um, even within the NFV use cases, there can be sort of sub-use cases, which uh, then require additional capabilities beyond what is generally required for, for NFV. We wouldn't expect um, every product on the market to actually sort of fulfill those requirements. But if a product is meant to be used in one of those sub-use cases, OPNFV basically has an opinion on how that use case should be realized and what the uh, surrounding capabilities should be. So we have um, test cases on IPv6 for tenant networking. We have a couple of test cases on BGP VPN. Uh, and we have an, a number of additional test cases on uh, what we call fundamental VIM capabilities. Those are, again, things that we want to move into the mandatory space over time, but the test, but we uh, sort of the, the confidence we have in those test cases isn't high enough yet so that we would actually make them mandatory. And um, a few words on uh, where uh, we plan to go with the OVP program in the future in terms of test scope. Um, things that are being looked at right now is, for example, neutron trunk ports. Um, the uh, smoke tier from OpenSec Tempest is something that we would like to sort of add on top of the uh, interrupt test cases. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, uh, SDN controller, high availability based on open daylight is something that we're looking at also on the, on the vSwitch level for, for OVS. Um, using example VNFs in order to ensure that we can um, do that, that the, the platform can support events around the lifecycle man management of VNFs um, and load tests in order to actually verify if the platform delivers uh, expected performance levels are, are being discussed. And this list is not final. The community is working on uh, nailing down the test scope. And I'm not sure if you're coming back to that later on. But um, like this is work in progress. And uh, the what, what's the planned release date for the for the uh, uh, .2 release for yeah, 2018? Let's say August. Yeah, OK. So after the holidays. Yeah. All right, so that was my part. And Georg is now going into a bit more detail of the Dovetail tool. Yeah, exactly. So um, after looking at OVP now in general, um, let's have a more detailed look at the two main components um, that Tim already mentioned. It's Dovetail, the test tool, and the OVP web portal. So. Dovetail, as already mentioned, is the project in OPNFV as well as the test tool that you run in order to get your platform tested and eventually, hopefully, uh, validated. Um, it's important to notice that being a test tool, it does not implement any tests itself. So you will not find any test-related code in the Dovetail repository. Um, and it's also not really the job of the Dovetail project to implement test cases. It's maybe the job of the Dovetail project to reach out to test projects and kind of argue for closing gaps in the test coverage. But you will not find any test-related thing, things in Dovetail itself. Uh, instead, Dovetail pulls in test frameworks and test cases from test tools that exist in OPNFV. And we have two 
general kinds of tests that are part of the scope of OVP right now. It's functional testing and non-functional testing. The functional testing part is being covered by the project called FunkTest. Um, it is itself, again, a framework um, that allows to hook in different test frameworks and different test cases. So um, it provides hooks for um, OpenEV specific tests or the OpenEV feature projects that develop OpenEV specific code. They can um, hook into this framework so that these tests get run. Um, but it also integrates uh, upstream test case frameworks um, like Tempest, RefStack, um, we have Rally in there. Um, we have test cases that spin up uh, VNF, yeah, VNFs and do lifecycle tests. And very recently, uh, also um, Kubernetes conformance tests have been included. And this list, of course, is not complete, <clears throat> but it gives you an impression of um, the diversity of uh, kind of upstream and OpenV specific test cases that do exist in Functest. And on the other side, non-functional testing, um, there's a wide array of test tools that exist in OpenEV. In that regard, the central one is maybe Yardstick. Um, it implements a couple of test cases looking at performance, networking performance, storage performance, um, memory, and so on, CPU performance. Um, but it's also the framework we use for implementing resilience tests. Um, so anything that does not necessarily exercise just an API and does a functional test, but looks at the characteristics of a system. Um, then in terms of data plane performance, there are two frameworks, VSPerf and NFVBench. Uh, they basically do um, data plane performance measurements. Bottlenecks is a, a project that looks at um, testing or identifying load limits of the system under test. So it's basically a load manager. And then StorePerf is another example of a project that looks specifically at storage performance. So there's a wide array of different test um, tools and test cases. And um, Dovetail and OVP leverages those, um, obviously. So um, among the uh, test cases and test tools used in the first release of OVP it was FunkTest, part of the test scope, and Yardstick, part of the test scope. Tim showed and explained the slide previously. Like, um, yeah, as I mentioned, from Yardstick, we use the resilience test cases and functus, as you can see here, RefStack, Tempest, and some of the OpenEV-specific test cases. Um, all those other frameworks are candidates for re later releases, and they're currently being um, investigated and evaluated, like how mature are the test cases, actually. So there's, in terms of governance of this whole compliance program, um, of course, any test that becomes part of OVP has to pass on the OPNV reference platform in our own CI. So that is what we are currently doing um, as part of evaluating the tests for the next release. We kind of pick and choose the test cases that we think are relevant. We run them in our CI system. And once they're kind of stable enough, um, we include them in the next release of OVP. Um, now, this looks kind of, going back, this of course looks kind of uh, complex and um, not everyone really wants to know all this stuff that is under the hood, especially looking at someone like a tester or an engineer in a vendor's, working in a vendor's lab who just wants to get, the, who wants to run the test in order to get the platform verified. Um, he or she doesn't really care about this. So Dovetail is meant to kind of hide all this complexity and abstract it away. So from a user's perspective, you only need to work with Dovetail. And it's, um, it's a containerized tool with a very simple CLI. Um, so that's rather easy to use. Under the hood, as I mentioned already and shown on the previous slide, we have a whole range of different test tools. And of course, a user needs to provide uh, the system under test, obviously, like the platform needs to be available and configured correctly <clears throat> um, to be available for testing. So what Dovetail then does when you start um, a test run, um, it instantiates the OpenEV test tools. Um, instantiation because all of those test tools are containers. All of them are available as Docker containers, so Dovetail basically pulls the right containers, the right container versions um, for an OVP release, um, pulls them down, configures the test frameworks and test tools according to user-provided information that matches, of course, the system under test and 
according to the specific test case that needs to be executed. And then obviously it, it triggers the test tool to run the specific test. And then the tools uh, do their magic, like exercises APIs or run the OpenStack level HA tests. And throughout a test run, and especially at the end of a test run, Dovetail um, collects the results, obviously. That's, um, currently, we collect the results um, still in a central database, um, but at the end of the day, it's a JSON file um, that contains very detailed information about which of the tests, is, uh, tests passed and failed. In addition to the simple pass failed um, JSON result file, Dovetail also collects all the config files and the log files of the test tools themselves. So not the log files of the system under test, probably vendors don't, do not want to publish those, but the log files of the test tools um, are also collected and made part of the final result package that is being uploaded to the web portal uh, and is part of the review process that happens in the community later on. Um, so what I'd also like to mention is Dovetail, of course, is, has a pluggable architecture, especially we're leveraging the, the containerized architecture of the test tools. So um, there is a, a prototype that exists currently where we have um, extended Dovetail to not just run the OPNV test tools, but also like an ONAP specific test tool. So ONAP is another open source community project uh, looking at um, orchestration uh, on the NFVI stack level, and um, they have provided a container that runs um, VNF validation tests. And given the, the pluggable architecture of Dovetail, it's fairly simple to hook in another Docker container and um, trigger the tests that are within this Docker container. And then, of course, the system under test changes here. It's a VNF, typically OVP, until now looks at um, yeah, a cloud platform, a VIM and an NFVI. <coughs> Then um, what does the topology look like? What, is, what are the requirements if you want to run Dovetail in your lab? Um, Dovetail typically is deployed on a test tool um, that sits in your lab next to the system under test. Um, in terms of connectivity from the test tool to uh, the system under test, we basically just require access to the OpenStack, to the public OpenStack API, obviously, um, but also to the management interfaces of the controllers and the compute nodes. <clears throat> this is needed for the resilience tests, obviously, which basically SSH into the nodes and then start to do nasty things um, on those nodes. Uh, so this needs to be available, basically, these two kinds of connectivity. That shouldn't be an issue in a, in a private lab. Um, what can be an issue sometimes is that um, since Dovetail needs to pull down the, the Docker containers of the test tools, um, the test host should have access to the internet in order to pull those containers. Um, but since we cannot generally assume that to be available in a private lab, we also support like an offline mode where you kind of we have instructions that you pull everything needed on a host that is connected to the internet and then you can manually transfer everything to your test host that sits in your lab run the entire test suite there it's kind of self-contained um, and at the end of the day you'll find this result package on the test host and you need to manually kind of then copy it from the host again and upload it to the web portal for review good talking about the web portal <clears throat> this is what it basically looks like. Simple text-based web page. We can maybe even switch to the browser. So this is what it looks like. Nope, you don't see that. Wait a second. There you go. This is what it looks like. Um, so this is the logical entry point for everyone who's interested in um, uh, getting his or her platform certified. So the web portal and it's on the, on the front page basically provides pointers to documentation, legal stuff like governance documents, um, the participation form you need to fill in in order to um, yeah, start participating in OVP. But then of course also user guide how to deploy and how to run Dovetail, um, CLI guide, but also if you're interested in learning what the test cases actually do, um, we have done the, uh, the, the laborious work of um, really writing down what each and every test case is actually doing, what kind of assert test assertions are there. So you can take a look at that if you're interested. <clears throat> 
and of course there are uh, release specific information also available. So there's plenty of documentation you can take a look at and um, find out what OVP is about. So what does now then the workflow look like uh, in case you, you're interested in that and you want to get your platform um, validated? Um, fairly simple. First of all, you need to s fill in and submit a participation form. That's just a legal step. So you need to provide some information about your company, about the product, and some contact persons. This participation form is online, so you can fairly easily fill it in. Then you do the testing, obviously, by deploying and running Dovetail. Um, after the successful completion of your test runs, um, you take the package, the result package, as I mentioned already, um, log into the web portal and upload it there and submit it for review. Um, and you can basically, well, you can upload it and then you yeah, mark it that it's available for review now to the reviewers. Um, and that's kind of interesting now. It's a community review um, that is being performed here. So basically everybody in the OpenEV community, I guess, can volunteer to become a reviewer here. So it's a very transparent process. The results are basically available to everyone who's participating in that pro program. And um, there is a review period. So reviewers can take a look at the results. And then on um, the, the verified at openev.org, uh, verified at openev.org mailing list, um, they basically plus one or minus one the test results um, as part of the community review. And then as a final step, there is a more legal uh, review phase to it. There is a so-called compliance verification committee that kind of oversees this from a from more formal perspective. And there's a final review then there. And if it decides that the results look good, um, the applicant is granted the rights of using the program marks or specifically the logo. Good. Um, demo time. Well, I have a short, uh, let's try to find it. Yes. So going back to the web portal. <clears throat> so you can log into the web portal using your OpenStack ID, a Linux Foundation ID, GitHub ID, there's plenty of Plenty of different options available. Let's see if I can make this a little larger. Um, so this is what the web portal looks like. Uh, since I'm a reviewer, you can see some results here already, but this is not what I'd like to show you. Instead, if you assume you have created, you have successfully passed all the testing, or you, you have run the test, let's say, not sure yet about it, uh, whether or not it was successful. You get a result package, it's a tarball, you can upload it to the web portal, and that's a simple step. And as you can see here, um, every test gets a unique ID. <clears throat> and by looking at this, now you can basically start to, uh, to, to verify yourself which of the test cases have passed and which have not passed. So you get an overview like of the total of 287 tests that are in there. This one passed, not all of them, but just uh, 84%. Among the mandatory tests, only 207 of the 250 actually passed. So this would not kind of make you eligible for getting the, the uh, for getting your program, uh, your, your product certified. Uh, and the same for the optional test cases. You can take a look at each test case individually. That's on a very high level, let's say. So those two passed, but this HA test case, it did not pass. You can filter by passed and non-passed test cases. So this is basically what you can do if you want to, to verify that um, the tests completed successfully or not. Um, once you have verified that, um, well, you can also give it a label that's typically used to define, to give a name to the product. Um, I also mentioned that we upload all of the log files. So this is basically used by the reviewers. So you'll find, for instance, the, the Tempest logs in here when we run the, the interop tests and so on. <clears throat> and going one step further back. Um, we also have information about the system under test, which uh, comprises the information about the endpoints um, that were exposed by this particular system under test, as well as um, some 
information we collect pre, uh, as kind of a pretest from the system, uh, like for all of the hosts, in this particular test case, it's just one host. But anyway, for all of the hosts of the system, you'd find some hardware and software information. Well, it's just hardware information about the system under test. Good. So um, now, if everything looks fine to you, you can click here. Uh, it's hard to read on the side, but you can basically then, let's see if I can change this. I need to scroll a little bit here so the GUI is improvable. Uh, you can submit the results for review. You can share it with maybe someone from your company uh, and you can also delete the results again. I'm going to do that. And then we are back where we basically started. So this is how the process looks like. Um, good. And then finally, a few words about the evolution of OVP. So um, as we mentioned, OVP is the abbreviation for OPNV verified program. Um, but OVP, no, <laughs> OPNV has moved under the Linux Foundation networking project beginning of this year. And uh, Linux Foundation Networking is an umbrella project um, currently covering six net networking focused projects. Uh, FIDO, ONAP, Open Daylight, OPNV, Panda and SNAS. Uh, more to come maybe. So this is not exclusively uh, limited to those. Um, and there are efforts ongoing to have compliance programs not necessarily for each and every of those programs or projects but um, for most of them really. So OPNV has one, we just talked about this. ONAP is currently working on launching a compliance program focusing on VNF validation, obviously. And Open Daylight has already also some uh, form of compliance program and that needs to be aligned with um, what is being done kind of on LFN, Linux Foundation networking level. And um, I haven't talked about, or we haven't talked about the, the logo yet, but you've seen it on plenty of slides already. So as you can see, this is the general layout and it was already designed with this in mind. So there's the center portion that can kind of show which project or program it basically addresses. It gives kind of a, a text description. And for OVP, it's infrastructure because we provide compliance for the basic cloud infrastructure. And it has a label, obviously, for the, um, the date. Um, and so this will evolve over time. So ONAP's uh, program is, I think, supposed to be released end of the year. And the important thing is Dovetail is supposed to become kind of the technical baseline for all of these, whereas the, the scope of the different tests and the test case creation will be governed within the projects, of course. So that's not the job of Dovetail. Um, finally, some, uh, some pointers in case you're interested. So the web portal, yeah, I didn't mention it explicitly. The web portal is reach reachable under verified.opnv.org. Um, if you're interested in joining Dovetail, um, everyone is very welcome. We always need um, folks to work on this. Uh, this is a link to, the, um, to our project wiki page in OPNV. Uh, we are also on IRC, we have a channel uh, OPNV minus Dovetail on Freenode. Um, just pass by and, and ping us if you have any questions on how to do things with Dovetail. And uh, yeah, of course, a general pointer to OPNV. And this basically concludes this talk. All right, thank you very much. And we're of course happy to answer any questions you might have. Hello, I have a question. Uh, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, the OP, uh, ONAP will focus on the VNF test. Uh, for example, uh, there are many like, VNFs. Uh, different VNF will have different uh, uh, test scenarios, test cases. But uh, uh, who will provide the test cases for VNF, ONAP or our uh, OPNV test? I think, I mean, uh, first of all, I think it's important to clarify that the uh, scope of the VNF testing, at least initially, is planned to be, can the VNF be run on an OPNFV infrastructure and can it be orchestrated by ONAP? So it's not so much about verifying that, for example, a virtual IMS actually does virtual IMS, but it's more like, does the 
VNF integrate with the Linux Foundation infrastructure? Um, so that it's, it's a slightly different way of asking the question. So, and, and, and having said that, the, um, let, let's take the example of, of packaging and onboarding, which is what the program plans to focus on initially. Um, those test cases, I guess, will be produced by the ONAP community. And when it comes to, for example, later on making sure that uh, VNF integrates properly with, uh, with telemetry, like for example with VNF event streams, there is going to be an element of OPNFV when it comes to like reading uh, the right counters from or, or the right performance metrics from the platform. And there's going to be an ONAP element to that as well. So in that case, both communities will have to collaborate and, and drive the test cases jointly. So it's a case, I, I guess the, the, the short answer is case by case, but initially ONAP. Uh, okay, uh, but uh, you, uh, you means uh, if we do the verification about the uh, VNF, uh, in our um, system, we should trigger ONAP to execute the VNF test. Am I right? Yes, uh, I think what the, what the, the way um, uh, an onboard, uh, uh, the way a test procedure for onboarding would look like is that you essentially upload your, uh, your, your VNF images or in whatever form your VNF is, is delivered, your, your container images or whatever, you upload them to a registry and you provide your, your, your packaging meta information somewhere and then you basically push the button in, in ONAP somewhere to sort of, I, now I want to bring that VNF up and make sure that it gets, gets actually executed on the platform. And that's basically what the test case would check. If, if, your, if, if the VNF packages can be successfully like unpackaged and deployed onto the system. Okay, thank you. Very welcome. Hello. Um, for the... Uh, uh, uploading the test results that you showed, right? Mm -hmm. Do the test results have any um, uh, kind of a proprietary information um, in, in them, uh, like IP addresses? I'm asking because there may be some enterprise customers who don't want to uh, just send a bunch of IP addresses to a, uh, and, and get, get them hosted online. So is there any way that we can, uh, someone can send them securely, uh, these logs or? <laughs> That's a very interesting thing because we just discussed this very recently. Um, right now, it's, it's not yet in place. So what actually happens is all of the log files that Tempest creates, they may contain IP addresses, so they get uploaded to the web portal. Um, we have seen this happening and being a problem recently, so um, I also don't want... I do see the reason for having such a kind of compliance or such a policy in place that this is kind of considered confidential. Um, but we also don't want anyone to really fiddle with the test result package by going in then and starting to manually fiddle with the log files because that's not really what we want. So we need to look into a mechanism to filter these kind of things on a dovetail level, honestly. Um, so yeah. We, we are aware of this right now, um, it's not the case. I mean, uh, we, what we, we would cover that by means of documentation right now, because also the default passwords are in there um, as part of the Tempest config, but we would have to, right now we would update our documentation saying, okay, careful, um, don't choose valuable passwords, don't choose valuable IP addresses, and typically it's anyway just 10.10. something. it's not too valuable, honestly, I consider. But you need to be aware of this, yes. Another thing that's important to note is that the test results that get uploaded to, to the portal are not publicly visible. They are visible to the reviewers in the OpenAV community, which is a specific set of people. It's not like published to anyone working in OpenAV. So, and I think how many reviewers do we have today? It's around 10 people, right? Roughly. Well, basically anyone can sign up. So yeah, but it's it's always a defined set of people. It's not like yeah. broadcasting it True. to everyone. You basically know who yeah. is. It, it is possible to find out who is able to see the results. Yes, and it's a specific set of people. So a question in terms of the forward path and um, some of the additional test scopes that you're looking at. Um, notice that. You know, performance are, are some areas that you're starting to look at with NFE, Bench, um, VSPerf, things like that. Um, what exactly would you be looking for from a performance metric that would say this is OVP? Because it's not like you could say for 
you know, for, for, for this many servers, we should expect this type of network throughput or mm -hmm. like, is, is there going to be threshold <clears throat> values yeah. or? So th this is obviously a very um, a difficult question, right? I mean, uh, the, uh, I, I, would, I would answer like in, in, uh, in two steps. Number one is uh, the compliance uh, verification OpenFV does is by definition a comparison with the OpenFV reference platform. So the first part of your, of, of your answer would be uh, whatever the performance of the OpenFV reference platform happens to be would be the threshold. Like because OpenFV basically takes software that is available to everyone. We only have open source software in OpenFV, and it composes this, uh, these different components to a stack, which essentially means the performance OpenFV is able to realize, everyone else can realize that same level of performance as well, because there's no, give, there are no secret ingredients in there. Give, given the same level of hardware, though. Yes, of course, hardware plays into it as well, um, and that's where it becomes tricky, because uh, we, I think we, in OpenV ourselves, we don't have a complete understanding on how sensitive the performance results that we today get from our available test tools are to hardware because we only have the hardware we have in OpenV, and, and the, the program hasn't run for long enough to give us a broader picture on uh, like where things stand in the broader industry. So that, that's actually the place where, uh, that's actually the reason why we're not making that part of the compliance verification so far because sort of the underlying hardware and how do we deal with differences in that uh, is, is an open question. But in principle, it's if hardware is the same, the performance question becomes, is your performance equal or better than the performance the uh, publicly available reference platform delivers? Okay, thank you. All right. So I have a last question, actually. Whose platform was it that only passed 85% of the test cases? <laughs> <clears throat> Damn, um, it was some some platform, some deployment that I did in the yeah. lab once. So it's yeah, you intentionally misconfigured it, right? If, <laughs> yeah, it's all about the demo, right? So it's I, yeah, I yeah. could not just show showing perfect results. Perfect would results be that would right? exactly yeah. that would not okay be credible. <laughs> all right, exactly. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>